All right, welcome to our quick review of the sector model, um, which really it's two, three slides if you count this one. There's a slide of information and there's also a slide that shows a picture of the model. Uh, the, they were designed to accompany the book People, Places, and Cultures, um, the 10th edition, and I am, of course, Ms. Ball, and I'll be your host for the day. So, um, the sector model is our second model. We're talking about uh, cities, and we're talking about kind of the historical evolution of these models. Okay, and it uh, comes from the work of a guy named Homer Hoyt. You do need to recognize the name. You need to recognize sector model. You need to recognize it as Hoyt's model, Hoyt's sector model, and uh, so forth. I'm going to go ahead and flip to the next slide just to show you what we're talking about, and then I'll come back to this one um, to review the information. Okay, so we're talking about the... Uh, sector model. It kind of starts out similar to the concentric zone model, except now we're dealing with pie slices instead of dealing with circles. Okay, So the general idea is, again, the city grows outward from the center, but it doesn't do so in rings. Okay, It does so more like in pie wedges. So a low run area could go from kind of the edge of the CBD, all the way out to the edge of the city. One of those things to remember when we're talking about city models, and really this applies to whether we're talking about North American city models or we're talking about international models, there's always going to be some common traits. And the number one thing you're going to see in every single model is some kind of a central business district. Okay, Central business district, just think downtown. That's really what we call it. You're also going to find some type of industrial areas, and you're going to find some type of housing areas. Different models will feature these three things in different ways, and they'll be different shapes, but you'll always find those three things. You might find more, but never less. Okay, so the pie-shaped pieces of the model, and I'll flip back to that graphic again here in just a minute, um, really they cover the different types of residential areas, so high rent, intermediate rent, low rent. Um, and when we're talking about rent in this case, what we're talking about are land values. Okay, so it's uh, it's really just a way of saying how much is the land worth that the house is sitting on. You can also think about it, how, how nice is the house itself, uh, but really the land value is what they're talking about when they're talking about rent. It's They're not being talking about rent like I rent an apartment, but more like if I were going to rent the land, how much would it be worth? Or if I were going to sell the land, how much would it be worth? Okay. The, um, the sector model also includes uh, an education and recreation section, and um, those pie pieces are based around transportation routes. Okay, So it incorporates and accounts for um, changes in transportation. There's also, again, industrial sectors just like I promised. So when we look at it, those lines in between the different types of segments, and this is just kind of a generic version of the model, those are our transportation routes. They might be major arterials, like big roads for cars. They could be major bus routes. They could be train routes. It could, at least in theory, be a river or some kind of a water route, but those are going to be transportation routes. That's an important thing to remember. And then we can then we get into and we look at um, how is the, the land used and distributed. So our our orange, of course, our central business district. It, that again, the down kind of that classic downtown area, lots of economic activity, not as many people living in the lake. Um, it's kind of the heart of the city. Then our blue pie pieces, these are factories and industrial uses. And around those you'll notice on the model and we if you know anything about the structure of cities, you know that this is pretty common. You'll find your low-class residential, right? In the previous slide, we called it low-rent residential. Here's the important thing to know. The, the um, land values are lower partially because they are close to those factories and industrial uses. That means more noise, more pollution, um, more vehicles in and out. All right, it also... Um, if you've ever been around factories, you know they're not exactly the most gorgeous things to look at. right? So those lower class or low rent 
houses tend to cluster around those areas in part because those factories, those industries bring property values down. And then we've got large areas that are middle class, that are a little bit wealthier. Uh, just like with the um, concentric zone model, they, the uh, properties are a little bit bigger, the houses are a little bit nicer, the property values are higher. Okay. And then the smallest segment of all, the purple one, is our high class residential. And you'll notice that that is the furthest away from the factories, it's also the furthest away from our poorer areas. It's unusual, especially in North America, to see rich areas right next to poor areas. That's something you see if you travel internationally um, in large areas of the developing world, but not really in the developed world, especially not in North America. Okay? The rich people don't live next to the poor people as a rule. So this has been our quick review of the uh, sector model put together by a guy named Homer Hoyt. You need to recognize the name, you need to recognize uh, that it's Hoyt's model, the sector model. You need to recognize the graphic. When you look at this, you need to look at that and, and immediately know sector model. All right. And you need to know kind of where the key pieces are. Not every graphic you see will look like this, but if you see a city model that's got pie slices, then what should think sector model? Okay. This is this particular graphic is just a real general one. It didn't include the education uh, district that your textbook includes. So if you wanted to see a picture of the graphic that's got that education recreation district, just look at page 310 on your book. Uh, but it does have, again, those same key ideas that I was talking about. It's got a CBD. It's got some kind of factory or industrial areas, some kind of manufacturing area. And then it's also got residential areas of varying social classes. If you have any questions, I'd invite you to bring them into class, and I will see you the next time we meet.